10 out of 10 times, Goofy Little Creature feels like the correct choice. It's a well done fight. I'm just sad about it because I, I lost so much. So uh, for those of you who weren't in the pre-show, uh, <laughs> which I suppose would be literally anyone but Noah. Who's your favorite Chris? My favorite Chris. Yeah, you like know, overall. My I have, number one draft pick, Chris. I think, honestly, a few years ago, I probably would have picked Chris Pratt because I really loved his performance in Parks and Rec, and I thought he was just a genuinely funny, like, guy. You know, I feel like a lot of people would have also said Chris Pratt five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people that would probably still say that now. Um, but I, I don't, don't know, know any he, people that would still say that now. Yeah, he's just... The more serious movies he gets in, the less fun he seems as a person. Yeah, and, then and the more you hear him talk. Things. Yeah, the more you realize he's just like a fundamentalist conservative Christian. You're like, oh, man. Yeah. I thought you were the chubby guy in Parks and Rec. It's it's the, uh, what do you call it? It's like the uh, the Jonah Hill thing. When he lost a bunch of weight and people stopped thinking he was funny because he was sick of being called the the Hollywood fat guy. And because yeah, he but was Jonah Hill's still about... like funny though. Yeah, he is. That's the thing though. Like people immediately thought he wasn't funny anymore because he's like, "Hey, can you please take me a little more seriously and stop being like fucking rude?" Whereas Chris Pratt lost the weight and he's like, "Oh, cool. I can just openly be an asshole now, and it's gonna be okay." <laughs> Huge brain take. Uh, I think maybe like Chris Farley might be Chris number Farley's one. Chris Farley's a real pick, good Chris. pick. He's definitely yeah, he's a classic there. Chris. Real, real solid Chris. Uh, my friend Chris. Mm-hmm. But Friend that doesn't Chris. really, like, yeah, no one knows who that is, so it doesn't really work like that, huh? A Speaking of friends, <laughs> mm -hmm. Noah, what did you do over the last couple of days? I, I gotta be honest, I pretty much just worked. This was a, uh, I picked up an extra shift because somebody was sick, so I ended up working uh, a nice little six days in a row, technically. And I worked my first Sunday at the liquor store, which, honestly, a really fun time. What's different about Sunday? Uh, what's different about Sunday is you have, like, three people who work all day instead of like seven and you work from open to close because it's only a uh it's only an eight hour day <laughs> okay and then is it busy on sunday or no um, like not comparatively it opened busy it closed busy and the middle was steady it was nice also our security guard uh made sloppy joes for everybody and because she's vegan i got to try uh beyond beef and it was pretty good yeah it is pretty good um i feel like ground like vegan meat is actually like surprisingly easy to work with mm -hmm. just because oh, like it's you need that it's texture it's like little chunks yeah. yeah like when you're eating a sloppy joe you want to have that springy beef texture you don't necessarily miss the flavor as long as all the other flavors are strong and present you know exactly what you know what you know what's an underrated this isn't going to be a what is your but you know what's an underrated uh meat hmm. that's when it's ground I think ground chicken is super underrated. You know, I started thinking that recently. I've had some, um, what do you Have call it? Have you ever had like a ground chicken, chicken burger? I've had uh, ground chicken tacos before. And I'm like, you know what? These okay. are actually like a lot better than I thought they would be, you know? Yeah. A ground chicken burger is so good. I might have to try that. Yeah, like people, people are sleeping. It's got like a little bit of that like turkey burger-esque flavor. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, it has like a... A tighter hold on like the, the like the the meat is held together more tightly than it would be in like beef or turkey, where it kind of falls apart a little bit when you bite. Right. With chicken, there's like a springiness to it. Oh, that's neat. I I think that would actually be pretty good. I think you like a lot of people love the taste of beef like straight up, right? But I feel like I feel like chicken can't hold its own in the same way as like an unseasoned patty in the same way that people seem to think beef can. Yeah, people, like, that's another one of my, like, beef takes, is people who are, like, obsessed with not putting anything on their, like, steaks. It's kind of mm. weird. Right? It's just, like, just a little bit of salt. Let the beef shine for itself. It's like, man, you can make that taste better, though. Like, you don't Th need Like, to... this is why they make fun of white people. Like, this is why people laugh at us. Like, well, there's, like, a million reasons. Yeah. They're all right. But, like... Cause come on, like why are you flexing camp, about right? it's like, not oh, salt and pepper? That's all you need, and it's like, but it gets a lot better if you do more than just salt and pepper. There's yeah, a it's lot not of a cool flex options. to be scared of cumin. Like it's not, like nobody's impressed that you hate spices, right? No one's like, wow, 
this guy is a genius because he likes to eat meat without this particular flavor. Oh, like, okay, you didn't win. Um, actually, joke's on you. I did. Uh, epic bacon for sure. Honestly, you today have man, won the internet, my good sir. Did did I send you that video or you send me that video of the the couple? I don't that, know. It was a TikTok. It was a couple who like still talks in early two thousands language, but the husband. Is I, trying I, to I quit. don't think I don't think I sent it to you, and I also don't think you sent it to me. Oh man, I. Made I mean, a I might have an unwatched. Very good. Let me, <laughs> let me check my TikTok and see if I've got any unwatched videos from Noah. I have one unwatched video from Noah yesterday at three twenty p.m. I don't know if that was it because I Clicking saw on the it. other one. I think like my sister sent it to me a few days ago. Oh yeah, no, that's something different. Yeah, that's a feet pics TikTok. <laughs> Get his ass. <laughs> Um, so, you know what? I, I, I went and I took the dive. I've become fully and truly and madly Michigan pilled. Indeed, indeed. So uh, for those of you who weren't in the pre-show, uh, <laughs> which I suppose would be literally anyone but Noah. Just a few of them. We, right? gotta, we, we should do that. We should do like a live pre-show. <laughs> do the pre-show just in the OTA, like plain old general chat. And then yeah, after like three seconds, we move into the private chat. <laughs> Yeah, just like record the pre or do like a live stream pre show and then just like for like five minutes and then stop record and then <laughs> and then do like a post show. <laughs> just an hour uh, later. Anyway. It's just like, hey, everybody. Hey, so the show's over. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. Yeah, that'd be really sick. I feel like a pre show could go incredibly hard. Um, anyway, I went to Michigan. Mm hmm. <sighs> It's 10 a.m. Um, it is 10 a.m. We're, we're doing yeah, this is the early rare early, early ish. Not that early, but, you know, earlier than typically I would be talking this much. Um, and like. after my voyage, which <clears throat> I just got back from late last night, I, uh, I, I on Saturday, it's Monday right now, Monday, 10 a.m., mm -hmm. uh, March 7th, 2022. Damn. And it's that time for everybody. Check your clock. Krampus, what are you doing? Weirdo. My cat just came in, like ran, jumped on the bed. Looked at me, jumped off the bed, and is just like scratching my chair. Classic she's doing a whole circuit. Moments. Yeah, she's doing a full circuit. Um, I went to Michigan Saturday. Saturday, I um, left at about four thirty. Went okay. up to Michigan right. to visit my to not visit but to to retrieve my friend. Um, my my friend Chad was he goes to school up there in the Upper Peninsula. He's a youper. Um, youper. And so. So drove nine ish, nine and a half ish hours Saturday to get up to Michigan. Uh, and then Sunday turned around, drove nine and a half hours back. That's the way to do it. That's the true Michigan yeah, experience. We, you know, I got, I got the true Michigan experience a little bit. You know, I went to a, um, <clears throat> I went, I went to uh, a White Castle. Oh, there you go. If that's not the White true Castle, Michigan experience, I don't know what is. White Castle goes fucking hard as hell. I... I'm so wrong for ever doubting White Castle. I'm glad you feel bad. <laughs> it's like really good. Nice. And I feel like it has a bad rep. Honestly, I feel like I only hear good things about White Castle, but simultaneously, it's always just like, hey, it's White Castle, right? I think it's because they sell their burgers like frozen. And so people are like, yeah, you can just get them at a Walmart and they suck. Well, that's because they're like frozen weird sliders. Yeah. And well, not 100 percent different. Way. Yeah, well, they're not like a fully 100% different than the ones you get at the place. The ones there are so much better and like fresher and they have like grilled onions on them. Mm -hmm. It's great. I think one of the big things is that they, when they make the burgers, they also make them with the onions on the grill. So it oh, imparts shit. some of the, uh, the onion flavor as it's grilling. Babish did that's an episode do about it. it a little while ago. I feel like that's what I remember him saying. Because I feel like people are scared of onions. Honestly, like, though. like not not people like you and I, you know, not not civilized no. folk who enjoy an onion, yeah. onion enjoyers. Um, but like the general populace, there's so many people who are like, no onions, no vegetables, mm -hmm. no salad. Dude, I fucking hate when like an adult man or woman, mm -hmm. when like someone who's like in their 30s, like a grown ass person would be like, yeah, I don't like celery. Shut the fuck up. Uh, like, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what don't you like? Mostly water? Get over yourself. If you're listening to this podcast right now and you're like, I don't like celery, it's all right. But like, come on, just eat it. Honestly, it's there's fine. like, I don't know. 
what it is because like i like celery celery is just it feels like the toothbrush of food yeah i'm pretty neutral on it and i don't love it but like yeah i'll eat some celery especially see, in like a like cooked in something like oh, a roux yeah. or anything that's a stew it's an like important it, soup addition it's one thing if you don't want to just like crunch on a bag of celery oh i get that's that. fine i fully yeah like it's that. got that like a little bit of a strange texture on the outside it can get kind of stringy uh you know if it's not your thing whatever but people who are like i'm like picking it out of my stew uh, i'll suplex you Just honestly i don't understand celery. the people that actually like go through the trouble of picking ingredients out of a soup because at that point yeah, the flavor's it. all there i get like maybe you don't like the texture at all but i also like while i say i get it i actually really don't get it guy who doesn't get it yeah like uh like the, the people who hate toppings on burgers mm-hmm. lowest of the low oh 100 percent like a plain, like if you go, if you go to McDonald's, you're like, let me get a cheeseburger plain. I, I, I don't get it. I, I can't wrap my mind around doing that to yourself. The worst is when I worked at McDonald's and people would get it plain, no seasoning. What? The only time that's okay is if it's specifically for a dog <laughs> and then go off because they love that. Wait, what, what seasoning could you possibly like? And McDonald's, they, they they season the burgers. Well, that's tight. I would have assumed yeah, that they have it like came a, like pre seasoned. If we're being honest, no, they they don't come seasoned, and they have a little seasoning gun. When I used to work there, I would get like sometimes I would when I was just like super numb to everything, I would just like put a whole bunch of seasoning on a patty and then eat it, and I would, like or like make a burger with it, and I'd be like, man, this is so good. Just to see like if you could feel again. Yeah, it was it was pretty good though. The uh, the seasoning was just like a it's pretty simple like salt pepper probably like. Salt, pepper, maybe like garlic powder, maybe a little onion powder. Like it wasn't anything complicated. Yeah, you know, just like a nice normal thing. That makes sense. Yeah, but it was a, yeah, it's a nice little addition, and I feel like people people slept on it. People didn't. People don't know it's there. I want can obviously like if you went in and asked for extra seasoning, they'd be like, yeah, sure, and then not do it. But like, was that a thing that ever happened? No, but they probably would do it because it never happens. Because it's not. It wouldn't be hard to do. Because it's like how they do the seasoning is this little like seasoning. Uh, I don't know if I'm, uh, this is an like industry secret, I guess. I don't know. They got like a little seasoning uh, shaker and it's got like a, a grip handle on it that you kind of like pull. Mm-hmm. And when you pull it, it shakes once and like, un- like it does like a, a specific amount of seasoning comes out. I love so, that. Like, you, just do it, oh, you just do it once over all the burgers. Okay. So then like when they were making yours, you could be like, hey, can I have extra seasoning? And they just like go grab the gun and just go like over yours. But they, they do it on the grill. They don't do it like afterwards. Yeah. Man, did I ever I ever tell you about like uh, one of the kids at the barber shop I used to work at who thought he had like a real revelation moment one day, and he's just like, you know, they always talk about you know get a job flipping patties, but I mean, I work at um I don't know why I was about to say Walmart. I work at McDonald's, and we don't even like flip patties there anymore. We just put them in a drawer. And I'm like, all right, you're kind of missing the point. It's just people being overly reductive. That's actually uh the point of those statements <laughs> but whatever i'm glad you so are i went to michigan with it. yeah you went i forgot to that i was initially talking about going to michigan yeah, yeah so i yeah, went yeah. all the way up to the upper peninsula and then i uh, i also partook in two other michigan cla- hood classics certified michigan hood classics okay uh which are uh pasties and a pasty is a um it's a just a, it's a meat pie it's like a short short pie with meat filling okay it's like a little it's a hand pie with a short crust and like potatoes and meat inside well that sounds amazing i yeah it was pretty good i had one the like the the classic one is it was a it was like beef and pork and then rutabagas and some carrots and potato hell yeah that sounds amazing it was pretty good yeah it was pretty good it wasn't that flavorful though overall it was a little bit of like i felt like an english peasant Mm mm-hmm uh, but there's some there's some comfort in that though it's not not a bad thing always and the other thing is called a uh, punshki um which is a donut but not really instead of using like a donut dough it's basically cake batter that's deep fried and then there's like a whole bunch of filling inside of it my initial gut reaction there was like a uh, funnel cake but it doesn't sound like it's that either no it's not a funnel cake because it's like still soft it's not like crunchy interesting or hard it's still like soft and supple. That does sound fun. Yeah, it's like a it's like a cakier donut dough All and right. then fried and then it's it's really it's like it's like 30% dough, 70% filling. 
Ooh, I do like that. So it's like a, it's a more than like a normal donut. It's got a lot of a much higher filling ratio. I like a good high filling donut ratio, but not, yeah, not I had, a standard donut. You got to make sure you balance it right. I didn't know what kind I was getting just because, it's, you know, you can't tell. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't like in an environment. It wasn't it was like a variety. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like I just just it wasn't like one. there was a uh, section it, that was like, this is the raspberry. This is the potato. It, yeah. Not potato. You know what I mean? Potato. <laughs> uh, it was like a it was like a buttercream, which was good, but I wish it would have been like custard. Mm. Yeah, I I am very much a uh, a custard filling enjoyer. I, it's not that I dislike the buttercream or the whipped cream filling, but I will ten times out of ten pick a custard over a cream filled if I have a chance to. Yeah, I just think it's it's a better flavor. It's got a better consistency. It's not as sweet, and it's it's like a nice like. We don't get custard too much as Americans. Mm-hmm. I feel like Americans are afraid of custard. Yeah, like only every once in a while in a donut. Mm-hmm. And even then, like of the filled donuts, we only have one that's readily available with custard. And it's the Boston cream donut. And it's like so Boston many cream. people. I feel like so many people, if you ask them what their favorite donut is, they'll say Boston cream. Or the or if you say Boston cream, they'll be like, oh, that's a really good one. Mm-hmm. It just proves that we need a little more custard action. Because people lose their minds over a creme brulee. They're like, this is the coolest and fanciest thing ever. Well, guess what, motherfucker? It's the, also we one could of be the having that all the time. Ever. It's so fucking cheap. You know what's in it? Like nothing. Yeah. Like eggs and sugar. Yeah. It's, oh man, I honestly, I love making like dumb little desserts that feel super fancy, you know? Yeah, creme brulee is definitely like the chiefest amongst them. Because mm-hmm. it's really just like what, cream, eggs, and sugar, and I think probably like some vanilla. Yeah. And it's just good. Yeah. I don't know. I love shit like that. It's just fun. So that was my that was my Michigan pilled experience. I also don't tell anyone. Oh. I also went to a dispensary. Oh shit. You uh, when I was in Michigan. To a dispensary? I'm telling literally everyone I know. No. Uh which just solidifies the fact that I feel about weed the same way I feel about anime. Where I'm like, All right. is it bad? No. Is it good? Sometimes, wholeheartedly, yes. Do people who like it a lot suck? Always. Just always. Mm, Okay, okay. I was wondering where you were going with that, but no, that's 100%. I can support that with all my heart. Yeah, it's like, this is a fine thing that has a lot of awesome applications and can be really cool, Mm -hmm. much like anime. Yeah. Uh, But then people will be like, hey, man, do you want to buy a Rick and Morty hat? I'd rather die. Like I, I would. I'm not. I'm not kidding. I would rather you like take one of my arms than make me wear a Rick and Morty hat. Honestly, the Rick and Morty and weed fandom has a huge amount of overlap that like I'm not. I'm not surprised about right. But like same. I'm also. I'm a little surprised about it. Just a little bit. But yeah, the 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 weed fandom is just something that I. It drives me up a wall. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just like Jesus Christ. Touch touch grace. Honestly, um, touch grace. I played some Elden Ring, too. Oh, nice. Now that I'm super jealous about. We talked about Elden Ring a little bit last week, but it was mostly just that um, I really love FromSoft games, even though I'm like ass garbage at them because I just I love the hype around them. I love the community like enjoyment that the games always get when they come out. And I just think it's a good time. But simultaneously, I'm like, and I am bad at this game. <laughs> yeah, I, I like I like them all. Uh, for the most part, uh, I never played Sekiro though. Um, it's I, the only one I haven't played. I heard it was a very like mechanically competent but story weak game. Which... Yeah, because it, it actually tried to do a story more than like the normal Souls games do. Yeah, which is saying that it it said anything exactly, other than at the beginning seek the Elden Ring. Um, I don't know, man. That's I a lot of story. Think... <laughs> I think Elden Ring is pretty cool, but for the first like five hours I played it, I thought it was garbage. Really? Was that? Yeah, because I was like, I wanted to play a Dark Souls game, and it's like, would you like to play a Breath of the Wild? I'm like, no, I fucking hate open world games. Why would I want to do that? Mm, ah, I see. And you picked up uh, the first FromSoft open world game. Yeah. And not really aware that it was open world. And then I was like, I'm just going to fight this boss that's right in front of me. And then I died like 50 times, and then I killed it. And then I'm like, I'm going to go fight the next boss. And I died like 50 times, and then I killed it. And people were like, those are like two like of the, the like, these kind of like harder bosses. I'm like, okay, I'm level seven. Mm -hmm. And I just hate this because I don't want to see boss, not fight boss. 
but also I was like, I could have had more fun doing other stuff. And then I went and did other stuff and I was like, that's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. But I just like, I didn't know what the game was at first. And I was like, it's kind of a strange dynamic that it's like, I feel like I was like, man, I feel like this is like way harder than normal, like tutorial boss would be in these games yeah and instead it's like hey remember how this is open world well here's a a mid-game boss as your very first boss you'll get your ass rocked don't fight him i didn't know that though i just thought i was bad Mm -hmm. but then i was like but i know i'm not that bad because like i've beaten all the other games so like i'm at least familiar with a little bit i was like i feel like i shouldn't die 40 times to the tutorial boss Mm -hmm. and i shouldn't do like seven damage when i hit it but yep here we are (laughs) And then I then I kind of ran around and did some like weird dungeony things and then that was fun. And then I got started to enjoy it a little bit more once I realized it was like not what I was expecting. It was a, a way more like open world. Mm-hmm. I like an open world game that does things well, and I feel like there's a lot of Elden Ring that I could definitely get into in that regard. Uh, but I am waiting for uh, a little bit just because it is sixty dollars and I hear the PC port is a little janky, so I figured I'd uh, yeah. hold off temporarily. Yeah, I think it's, um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's a, it's a good time. The only problem with open world games is since like since I played because the the my my favorite open world game that I've played to date is by a mile been Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like every time I play another open world game, I'm like, man, I want to fly. Mm. I'm like, where's the hang glider? And I fully understand why they didn't put a hang glider in Elden Ring, but God, I would. Every like ten seconds, I'm like, you know, it'd be great right now. A hang glider, a little hang, a little hang glider. Honestly, it's a very bold move on their part, and I support it fully that they put a hang glider into their Zelda game. You know? Yeah, and it's so fun. It's like by it's like by a mile the best part of the game. Nice, because just and like the fact that there's free climbing and hang gliding. Ugh, you can just go up anything and then fly down it. Oh hell yeah, you need it. It's it's so goofy. I love it. You do get a horse though. I saw. Isn't and the horse's name is Torrent? Yeah, and he has horns. I love that his name is Torrent because it feels like a funny anti-piracy thing, but I was first made aware of his name being Torrent because someone was talking about the horse on stream and there was somebody in the comments being like, "Oh, uh, you know the horse is only named Torrent if you pirate the game, right?" That's the dumbest shit ever because what like you think that FromSoft a, 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 like one of the most Japanese ass companies in the universe wouldn't go torrent based on like the fact that there's so much like folklore and like traditional like uh like Shinto style like yokai type mythologies that go into the making of those games. You think that they would be like torrent because piracy and not torrent because like rushing water. What? Mm-hmm. And it's also probably not torrent. That's probably a translation. Oh, without a doubt. I think they're really cool, though. And I, I, Torrent is a really fun horse. Definitely gives, uh, and I think kind of to a, like, it's supposed to give, but um, uh, Princess Mononoke Yakul vibes. Okay. I do not know what that means. Uh, the little, the yak, the red elk that he rides around in Princess Mononoke. Okay. It's got, like, the little two prong. It's like a pronghorn red elk. Uh, not really a horse at all, but, like, I, that's kind of what it, it gives me the vibes of, because it has pr- the, the, like, a... Uh, conical horns Mm -hmm. Uh, there's also like a forest guardian in the game that looks like uh the forest guardian in princess mononoke which again that's not because that was invented in princess mononoke it's because that's also derivative of japanese mythology and folklore right right it's nice to see how much care was put in wait isn't the forest guardian like one of the another early boss that's like fully optional that you can run into i don't know i haven't seen it i've just seen a picture of it okay i feel like it is but i I couldn't be sure because I have not played, but still, I don't know. Everything about it looks fun. I'm just out here playing Dark Souls 2 again because that was my first Dark Souls, and I'm just like, eh, may as well, right? Dark Souls 2 is so fun. I'm trying for the slow run, and ah, man, that sucks ass. Mostly because um, I've had a few moments where I've done, like, pretty well, but then I defeated the, uh, the Pursuer and accidentally stepped in that stupid bird nest. And didn't leave immediately. Uh, I went to like what the abandoned tower or whatever the hell it is. The Lost Bastille. Yeah, the Lost Bastille. And then since I was there, I was um, I forgot where the second fire is and I could not get out. So I kept dying and I'm like, well, I keep dying and I have to recover my souls because I had like 40,000 of them. 
and then I ended up losing them because I got I got too big for my uh, lunch there. My eyes were bigger than my stomach, and I tried to take on the Rune Sentinels and uh, lost them all. That was really sad. I can't believe you lost all your souls to the Rune Sentinel. Yeah. I mean, there's three of them, right? They gang up on you. It's uh, it's definitely unfair. That, that is a tough boss. You gotta you gotta fight them at the at the top, and then <clears throat> and then try know, and fight them. And... Yeah, it's a good fight. Like it makes you definitely balance out your uh your resource consumption in a good way. Like it's it's a well done fight. I'm just sad about it because I, I lost so much. What's what's your favorite Dark Souls boss? I have not played enough to know for sure. Of the ones that I have played, there's, um, oh, what's, like, the molten area? Uh, like the, uh, in Barton Dark Souls 2? Yeah. The Iron Keep? Yeah, so there's that gigantic flame demon. You like the smelter demon? I have never fought him before, uh, because Duh. I couldn't figure out how to fight him. <laughs> but you I, You just uh, walk into his little ring. You gotta go across the bridge, there's, like, some levers. Oh. Pretty good, man. Uh, so I, I recently figured out how to fight him, but I haven't done it He's yet. He's also, like, the most brain-meltingly annoying boss in the game. That is not happy to hear. Damn. Yeah, I thought... It's just because he... You needed, he has like, a mechanic where he takes away your health constantly. Oh, yikes. Like, so so if you... Well, after you get past his first phase, if you stand near him, you lose health. Oh, got it. So you have he's to, like, like on fire. speed get him. Yeah, so you have to, like... So he's just, like, even without getting hit you're taking damage and he does it does like an insane amount of damage with his like uh like his enhanced sword mm -hmm. so like you have to you have to heal up frequently and uh he also like jumps on you so he's, he can be kind of annoying uh in that case uh i take it back he's not my favorite i thought that um this whole time i thought he was so hated because you had to stand in lava to fight him because i thought you had to just become oh you're thinking the old iron king that's the one where he had, like he's right in, he's in the lava oh oh yeah yeah in he's that after case, the smelter demon yeah him him the old iron he's, king he's not that i have beaten smelter demon before actually yeah man that what a bum rush moment though that was miserable that was back before old i knew iron you could king. lock on so um mm. Which was most of my early Dark Souls experience. I only learned you could lock on after I stopped playing. Um, but that's on me because I was playing with mouse and keyboard. And I forgot all of the tutorial stuff almost immediately because it was a mildly unwieldy system. Yeah, the old Iron King is pretty cool. Because he's like in the lava the whole time. But there's that one part of the arena where if you like roll the wrong way, you'll fall into a little lava hole. And that's funny. It is. Honestly, it's just objectively very funny. Not my fault that you fall into the old iron hole. And he shoots a laser beam. Also pretty funny. Why does he shoot a laser beam? There's no reason for him to do that. <laughs> it's, yeah. out of, it's out of his hand, too. He's already on top of the world. There's no reason to be worse. Well, he's one of the four great souls that you have to beat in that game. Ah, uh, that figures. Of course, he's not somebody that I can just bypass. I didn't yeah, really yeah, think yeah, he beat... was, but like there was a part of me that hoped. Well, you can functionally bypass him because until you, like, there's nothing after like him. And in like that area, there's a, I guess there's a DLC entrance, mm -hmm. but like in terms of like the story, if you just like walk away instead of going to that room, you can play the rest of the game and then you only have to go back in that room when it's time to like finish the game. Well, I still would have to get him though. I can't, I can't fully bypass yeah. him. Yeah, exactly. Although I've seen some, some, uh, speed run tech that lets you just, because the four great souls, you can actually use like what the same great soul over again, if you can get the boss to respawn or something. So I guess uh, maybe I've never watched any of the glitched. If, I, I usually just I was gonna say if you ones. if you want to uh, cheat, I guess you could do that. I, I definitely that. don't want to do that for my first like real playthrough though. Are you doing the slow run for your first real playthrough? I am. It's I I've I feel found... like that's not a good way to do it either. No, it's definitely not. But it's the way I was gonna realistically almost do it anyway, just because I need all the souls I can get because I'm just <laughs> having a straight up bad time. <laughs> Honestly, the hardest spot to clear out has been. Um, hides tower of flame because once you get the upstairs done which is its own little like beast and whatever uh there are those guys in the sewers that lead to no man's wharf and mm -hmm. it's just very inconvenient to clear those guys out because there's only like four guys down there and it makes it really feel not worth its while but boy howdy you gotta you gotta go get them <laughs> hey what you gonna do right
Yeah, I, I tried to, like, kill every area from, like, bonfire to bonfire and, like, just reset and just keep doing it over and over again. Mm -hmm. But I was also using spells. See, I I have considered, I have really seriously considered killing my, uh, my, oh, I'm up to almost 13 hours at this point, but I've considered killing the run and starting back up with a caster build because it, it seems fun. It seems like a good time, but I don't know how just to go it. to the, just go to the bottom of the house in Majula and get the soul vessel. It's in the chest mm -hmm. and then you can just respect your levels to be a caster right there. Yeah, but if I if I start out a fresh character, then I get to start out with a free spell. That is true, and then it gives you like twice as many uses because of the way they did it in Dark Souls 2. Ah, twice as many because Dark Souls 2, yes. Dark Souls 3 gives you three times as many uses, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Nice. Whew, lucky I figured that out. But yeah, you know, I, I was thinking about it. A friend of mine, we were talking about it, and he's like, honestly... If you're going to do caster, you should just start with caster because it's a lot harder to spec into caster than it is to spec into melee. And I'm like, ah, I don't know how to do anything. I'm just going to punch things. It's OK. And I've regretted that continually since I made that decision. Yeah, because like that's the like like punching and like using swords and shields is like the, the easier way to play the game at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But like for doing the slow run, it's just better to have like spells so you can just blast everything from a distance. It feels like the default Dark Souls experience, too, which is uh, the uh, the punching that is, which is something that I enjoy. Like, you know, it's it's just like, hey, you roll, you smash. I accidentally parried earlier. Uh, I still don't know how I did it because I didn't have a shield during my tutorial. So when it taught me how I fully forgot Th this is a consistent theme, by the way, I have zero memory of tutorials. And yeah, I guess I could go back. But why would I do that? Yeah, you also will do way more damage if you're using, like, swords or knives or axes or... Mm hmm I, uh... I don't know. <clears throat> it's just... I'm doing a faith in Elden Ring, and that's kind of funny. How does a faith build work? Fireballs and lightning bolts. I love that. I love that so much. The spells in Elden Ring look so fun. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Especially because some of them just, like, look dorky. It's like, hey, you summon yourself a great big ol' uh, jellyfish. Okay, cool. Oh, this, the summoning is different than the spells, actually. Oh, shit. Yeah, every, everybody gets to summon. Really? Oh, I love that. Yeah. This is wonderful news. Yeah, the summons are pretty fun. The little jellyfish guy is super goofy. Because doesn't he just kind of float around and, like... Shoot, like a little poison thing every once in a while. He shoots things? Oh, that's adorable. I love him. I yeah, love definitely him so a good much. friend of mine. Then, like, you get wolves, too. I saw that. It's nice to have a little wolf, Which, buddy. The wolves are kind of cool, but I mean, the jellyfish is funny. Yeah. I mean, there's there's the maybe it's the best companion. And then there's jellyfish, which is definitely the best companion. So, like, you may as well bring them in. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the other ones are. I'm actually I'm putting them up right now to see. I think there's a, an old man sorcerer. Uh -huh. You can just get the ashes of an old man sorcerer who just hang out with you. And then that's that's all I know is there's an old man sorcerer and a jellyfish. What is? Wait, there's one that just makes you. Wait, there's you one can that be just your own summon. Yeah, there's one that just does a copy of you. I like that. Talk about dorky. That's so weird. <laughs> it's a it's a choice. That's for sure. Uh, and there's just like an the ones that are people are kind of weird to me. Mm-hmm. Like why would I want like a an archer or like a a man with a sword? I could have like a goofy little creature instead. Mm-hmm. Ten out of ten times, goofy little creature feels like the correct choice. Why would I not choose a goofy little creature when presented with the option? Let's see. What else we got here? Oh, we got like a little pumpkin man. Oh, yeah. I've seen that guy. Oh, he's ugly. I love him. I love anyone that has a big, ugly helmet. Um. Oh, what do you call the onion knight in uh, Dark Souls 2? He's great, too. Yeah. Kind of uh, Siegfried. Yeah. Oh, man. I love that. I'd love to get that armor. Oh, no. I just I searched him and there's this picture of him without his helmet on and I hate him now. Oh, no. I never wanted to see a face. I just wanted to see the Onion Man. He's not a big man at all. He's just a little man in a big armor. Yeah. I feel betrayed. Why? Because I... I don't know. I, I like the idea of him being a big man in big armor. He just wears that. He does, but, like, I don't know. I hate seeing his face. I The, the helmet wow. was all the face I ever needed. What a hater. <laughs> also, I like how there's just stuff interspersed here about... um game of thrones because there's the onion knight in that as well but it's just people using 
a picture of the actor and then the Dark Souls asset for uh, the Onion Knight. Um, what do you call Siegfried? You said, uh, yeah, Siegfried. Yeah, there's a couple of them, but but there's just like the Dark Souls Knight and then the actor, and it's just like how Davos became the Onion Knight, Game of Thrones. And it's like no, that's okay, thank you. He sold the the onion. He cooked the onion. He man serpent. Knight. You can summon oh. a man serpent. Man serpent. I'm just looking at like all these weird summons that exist. Holy shit! Oh, this is just a serpent soldier from Dark Souls. Never mind. Who's man serpent? A oh, serpent soldier man. from Dark Souls. Oh, it is. Okay. It's it's a little more lizardy, a little sillier. Okay. Well, that's fun. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of interesting <laughs> and is. goofy summons. Yeah, it's it's just like a lizard man, but emphasis on the lizard. Mm-hmm. And that was that was my week pretty much. I I played some Elden Ring and then I went to Michigan and came back from Michigan. There you go. Yeah, I uh I didn't do shit. I <laughs> I have been having um bad dreams about work recently though. Oh, that's sick. Um but not the job I have now, my old job. That tracks. Yeah. So like here here's what happened, right? I had a dream last night that they hired me back without actually interviewing me. And they just hired me back for, but <laughs> not for like, my job, for a different position within the place God. that I am not qualified to do. It was like some admin work that like I need to know systems and stuff. And I, I don't know those. And I was just like, huh, you think they, uh, how do you think they're going to react? I was like talking to Nina or something. I'm like, how do you think they're going to react when they find out I can't work on Sundays because uh, I'm busy then now because that was one of the, um, uh, the stipulations on getting hired in a permanent position at my current place is um, they needed Wednesday nights and Sundays. Yeah. And I'm like, hell yeah, I can do both of those as soon as February is over. And lo and behold, you know, the first Sunday in March, here I am. But yeah, um, that was a really stressful dream. And I kept trying to find the guy who I had to talk to to tell him that I couldn't come in, but he wasn't around. And then a lot of this is based on the anxiety of hearing through the grapevine that they were going to call me to come in for one last Sunday. And I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm busy. I work now. And I missed a call from my old boss on like Monday last week. And he never called me back. He never left a message. He never texted me. And that's like, there are some times that I'll call people back. Right. And make sure things are cool. But I don't want to call him back because I know it's going to end in him asking me to come in. And it's like, dude, my last day literally just happened. Let me have some separation, you know, like I will never go back. But also it would be nice to be given the the courtesy of allowing some separation time so that I could like choose to come back after. Yeah. A respectable period has passed, you know, like it just feels like a normal thing to do. <laughs> oh, well. And that's, yeah, I that, think that's just kind of how, like, work places are, though. Like, they just don't give... Even, like, the best ones will, like, ultimately, as soon as you're like, hmm, I'm not actually going to be that convenient for you right now. They're like, this is an outrage. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like workplaces are so much more willing to be like, wow, you can do anything you want until you do something that's minorly inconvenient to them. And then they're like, holy shit, this is the worst thing you've ever thought about. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just, I am... I'm trying to get into it every single time I swap jobs. I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I actually like, I'm going to try and put up like reasonable work home barriers, you know? And each time I get better about it, but for some reason, like people still just do not care, even though I'll be like, no. And I'll say no more than I need to, to make sure that the barrier is like established. So it's like, Hey, yeah, let me say no. But then because I say no a little bit more than I need to, they're like, well, no doesn't really count because it's like, it's a little bit much, right? Uh Yeah, I'm going to have to figure some kind of work out for the summer, but I don't know if I'm going to go back to the state store or not. Yeah, they do have summer help. I know. And it should be easy to get back in. And I'm sure that they would love to have you back as long as you make sure you come in for the very last day (laughs) again. (laughs) True. Wait, come in for the very last day. Uh, weren't you in there for like the last like two weeks of the season or something like that? Yeah, I was there for like, th- I think the two weeks, full, like not even a full two weeks. Nice. Uh, you know, so you gotta, sometimes you gotta just uh, show up fashionably late. There you go. 
to everything. Make a good impression and leave. Bada boom, bada boom. State store employee, baby. Oh, also, when I was driving back from Michigan. Uh, mm-hmm. What? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> when I was driving up to Michigan, I had the genius idea to start oh. freestyling. Oh. And let me just say, I'm kind of wicked on the sticks. You? Wicked on the sticks? Really? It's been said. Many people are saying this. Honestly, many people are saying this uh, from what I've heard. But uh, yeah, so my my friend uh, Danny was driving. And while Danny was driving, I uh, had the genius idea of just freestyling over his music initially by just reading out billboards that were on the... uh, on just on the highway, like a, bringing out every billboard, every road sign. Um, and then it just devolved from there. So there was like four hours of just me like freestyling, which was very funny. And then on the way back, there's also a little bit of me freestyling. Damn, that's was, a lot of freestyling. <laughs> it was really funny. There was some good bars in there. My favorite, which is one that, first of all, Danny said was bad, which I, is so wrong because it wasn't bad. I'm on your side already. But the final, the finality of it was they call him Long John Silvers, but I'm longer. And that's hilarious. That's very good. That's hilarious. And that's he was hilarious. like, yeah, what does he, he was mean like, that's bad. That's what I said. I'm like, I'm right. I, I was so right. Damn. Yeah. yeah no, was, that's that's a that's good, good freestyle. That's a that's really good freestyle. He's got no taste. I guess he's allowed yeah, was, to have no taste, but still. It was a really good uh it was a good bar. Anyway, speaking of uh, of taste and uh, rap, um, he does actually have good taste, and he introduced me to um, the the project by actor. I think I'm pretty sure it's David Diggs. Are you familiar with him? No, I don't think I he, am at he all. Is, he is an actor and also a musician. He has a, a a kind of experimental horror rap group called uh, Clipping, and okay. they go really hard. I would heavily recommend oh, it. Clipping you with a period at the end. It's yeah. Really that's how you know it's intense. Uh-huh. Um I would give it a give it a shot. Their their song um they got they got a whole bunch of bangers, but I think it's like Say the Name is like the, the biggest of them and it's uh really good. I'd give it a listen. Nice. I will do that. Let's see. I'm pulling it up now because I personally have never had a harder time talking for one hour in my life. Yeah, I'm really fucking tired. I literally, of the last, like, 25 hours, I drove for, like, 19 of them. Mm-hmm. But I also, like, need to do a whole bunch of shit today. Like, a lot. So I... I but I also missed last week's episode, so I can't miss this one as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely want to avoid it if you can get away with it. It's kind of cool. I just feel like a, a a hurricane of exclusively letting people down. So, you know. What a Kind of cool. Oh, you know what? I have a fun thing we can talk about that's... That's not sad. Um, I'm making some uh, pork and sauerkraut today. And, and it's not even Jackson, New Year's Day. I know, right? Well, here's the thing. On New Year's Day, uh, we do a potluck at work. And I brought in chili and my one co-worker brought in pork and sauerkraut and mashed potatoes. Yeah, a classic. And, you know, that's a way to open up New Year's Day. You got to love it. But um, so Jackson, actually, let me before I say anything about what he did, uh, tell me this. How often do you do you make pork and sauerkraut ever? Uh, no, I don't. I never actually made it myself. OK, uh, when you eat it, does it seem like they did anything other than take like the bag of sauerkraut or jar or can or however you happen to uh, grab your sauerkraut, put it in a pot and put the pork in there and slow cook it? Yeah, that's pretty much what they do. So that's what I was expecting. I'm like, OK, cool. A nice tangy sauerkraut experience with some pork that maybe is a little dry that's you know it's what i expect to see yeah and i take one taste of this sauerkraut and firstly he seasoned the sauerkraut but not like not like salt and pepper seasoning he put like caraway seeds in there and it was a really rounded full flavor that like makes sense as a like traditional annual meal because it seems like you actually like gave a shit about it okay and Man, it's some of the it's some of the best sauerkraut I've ever had. Yeah, and I can I can see that for sure. What he did was he drained off all of the uh he drained off all the sauerkraut liquid and gave the cabbage a quick rinse to get some of the extra boom off of it. And I don't, I don't know how I feel about that, right? Like that feels like maybe it's a little excessive. 
but I can't argue with the results because it still had the tang and it was delicious. Yeah, I feel like that makes a lot more sense because so many times when I've had like pork and sauerkraut, it's always with like an old person. Yeah. And like, I feel like, first of all, that like the bar, the barrier to entry for cooking is like very low, but there's so many like old people who just never like seem to care beyond sustenance and like occasionally a little tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's always like slightly dry pork and like sauerkraut that was like slow cooked together. Yeah. And like, yeah, I, I feel like that's one of the, the things where like whenever I like make something, there's always like like boomers and up generations will be like, oh, my God, where did you learn to make this thing? Like someone will be like, oh, yeah, like I know how, like someone will like I'll talk about like making dumplings or something. So it's like, where did you learn to make dumplings? I'm like, OK, well, first of all, you do understand that food is not at all racially gated, mm-hmm. like in terms of ability to create. Not in terms of like the the appreciation for and the culture behind it and things like that. Obviously, there's like a lot of nuance there, and there's a lot of people who are like generationally raised to make certain dishes in certain ways. But like your ethnicity doesn't have to define everything you cook forever. Yeah, like you can make like you can have like like a, a like a white guy from I don't know Michigan making like really really good Jamaican style food. Maybe not the best in the world, but like there, people are able to create because there is the idea of sharing interculturally mm-hmm. and food is something that is kind of like a math or a science in like a universal sense. And that like if you do this to this, it will be like this. Mm-hmm. And like I've yeah. had so many old people be like, where'd you learn to make dumplings? I'm like, I looked it up and then I watched people and I said, OK, I'll try and internalize that. And I saw like my own project, and my own things available for me. And then I made that. It's like, that's how. Mm-hmm. It's not It's not that hard to learn to make a new thing, right? Yeah. You can get out there. You can do fun new stuff. Yeah, especially if you, like, try something from, like, a different, like, culture and you find out you really like it. And you're like, oh, well, I kind of want to try making that at home to save some money and also to, like, learn a little bit more about the, the, the traditions that surround, like, classical dishes. Yeah. It's, like, a really good way to get in touch with, like, the world as a whole. And also um, save money and also eat good food. Mm-hmm. And it's fun because it's like sometimes it makes you appreciate the food that you have out and about more when you know, like when you know more of the effort that goes into it. And it's like, oh, this is a this is a shockingly simple dish to make. I can't believe they made it taste so good with so little or wow, this is even more complicated than I thought it was to make. I love how good this is and I'm grateful that they made it for me, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's just, like, a a loss of some level of respect for, like, the ideas that go into cooking. And it's not just about, like, oh, well, you know, my mom told me how to make, you know, uh, roast beef. So I'm going to do that forever and nothing else. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I've been thinking about roast beef recently, too. I haven't made roast beef in ever. And I haven't eaten roast beef in so long. But I kind of want to, right? Just like a nice roast beef dinner day. Potato, carrot, roast beef, a little yeah, there's gravy. Some, there's some qualities to it, you know. I uh, I did I did I cooked up some venison tenderloin the other day. Hmm. That was pretty good. Very nice. Oh, you sent me a picture of that, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I did it with oh, some it Brussels so sprouts. Good. Made a Hasselback potato, um, in the air fryer. Then an air fried Hasselback potato, and then I, you know, what I'll say about Brussels sprouts. Hmm. I I think the thing about the the Brussels sprouts is people have gotten so into the idea of like fried air fried and like seared and baked brussels sprouts that like there is such a default disrespect given to steamed brussels sprouts okay a a good steamed brussels sprout is so good but like people are like no mushy and bad i'm like did you know if you deep fry everything it's not always better sometimes there's other textures that are good Mm mm-hmm Especially if I'm, like, going to air fry a potato, have some, like, breaded, like, baked tenderloin, why would I want another crunchy, crispy fried thing? Right? You can definitely get some more out of it. And you can, like, when you steam it, you can steam it with stuff that imparts flavor, too. Yeah. I did a... It's not... You're not just, like, steaming it in plain, unsalted water. You're not just boiling Brussels sprouts and being like, all right, yeah, the Brussels it's, sprouts it, are done. Because, like, there's so many ways to steam something. Like, literally, what I did with them, I, I halved them. And then I tossed them in like a, a balsamic vinegar and uh, Parmesan and then just like some other 
like uh like uh some garlic infused oil is what I had made for the tenderloin. Hell yeah. And then I like I put them face down on a pan and then I got like the heat up pretty high and then I turned it down, put some water in there and put a lid on the pan. Nice. Um, so you still got amazing. a nice little sear ish on one side. There was like side. a little sear, there was a little browning on the on the one side, and then Just they also enough. had like a uh, like a nice like soft texture and they mm-hmm. stewed. Yeah. And I just Man, that's that's one of my uh larger issues with like the Gordon Ramsay cooking shows. And so actually, have I talked about Next Level Chef on here yet? Uh, I don't think so. We're about to shit talk that bullshit show really hard. Um Next Level Chef is a new competition cooking show where there are three levels of kitchens stacked on top of each other. It's like a three-story building in a big old studio. Um, there's the bottom kitchen that has like the most like basic of bare necessity equipment. Then there's the middle kitchen, which is your standard like mid high grade professional kitchen. And then there's the top kitchen, which has all the bells and whistles you could ever dream of, you know? And you, there were three teams, Gordon, and then two other people. And you start out in whatever room you get assigned and you have to work your way around. And it it could have been good, right? It could that sounds have like a been. Cool pre- that's a cool premise. And kind did of. you ever watch the movie The Platform? No. So it's um it's this uh it's this movie about um a prison with like two hundred and fifty floors where the top floor down to the bottom there's this it's just a giant tower, and each floor is a single cell, and this platform of food goes from the top down. And, uh, wow, that's, I wonder if it's saying something about our society. Yeah, no, it's, it's very blatantly saying something about society. And if everyone takes just enough food, everyone in the tower can eat in theory, but you know, the tower is also bigger than it's supposed to be. Yada, yada, yada. No one, um, doesn't Or like, everyone takes more food than they need to, because you'll get people who are down in like the hundreds who get up top, uh, cause it switches every month where you're at. And How? once you move like up a there, guard comes into your cell and it's like, all right, buddy, you're no, going you get here. Knockout, a knockout gas. And then they shift everyone around. Why don't they just keep them in a normal prison? Uh, because it's a, an experimental prison. You can go oh. there. Like you can even volunteer time there. What the fuck? Yeah. Like one guy's like, yeah, I want to quit smoking. So I volunteered to spend like X number of uh, months here to also How many months? get. You, yeah. Just he don't. S- yeah. He, he was just. Go camping. He, if he, Why would you no, go to prison? He went to prison because he would also get like a college degree. He could like go to college for doing this because it's part of like an experiment. And uh, so, yeah, he he goes in and he's in this room with this guy who accidentally killed somebody. And but yeah, the food goes down on the platform. But that's also the point of Next Level Chef is there is a platform of food that hits the top floor, second floor, bottom floor. So when you're on the bottom, not only do you have to deal with a shit ass kitchen, you also have to deal with the leftover food that everyone else gave you. And it feels really weirdly dystopian to be watching a show that's based on this heavy social commentary movie that is now like, hey, and we turned it into a game show, you know? But all that aside, everyone on the show is just fucking mean. Oh. Which, like, I guess I'm not surprised, right? Gordon's shows all have a uh, a tendency to be a lot meaner to the audience than they need to be, or to the uh, contestants than they need to be, uh, just as a general rule. And I get that. Like, it's it's part of his appeal. It's It's what people watch him for. But, like, you don't need to be like that. And then, at the end of it all, like... They're eliminating people because the judge has like beef with them. And it's like, it's not that they're bad. Like, cause it was, oh, what was it? Three different types of chefs. There were like professional chefs, home chefs, and then internet celebrity chefs. So like the one girl who just got eliminated, um, when I stopped watching uh, a couple weeks ago was a Twitch cook. Like she just has a Twitch channel where she makes food and she hangs out with people and she is a competent chef. She has like, um, uh, I believe it's Japan gave her an award for representation of their cuisine and she is not Japanese. Like she is a very competent, competent person, but because she was an internet chef, they, uh, they treated her like shit the entire time. Did they in real life? Who knows? But that's how the editing of the show made it look. And it's just like, Hey, this is simply not a fun show to watch, you know? Yeah. But, um, what got me onto this topic of next level chef, not being the greatest show. Um, every time 
Brussels sprouts are brought up in a Gordon Ramsay show, if there's any crisp on them, he acts like they're burned to a cinder. And it drives me crazy because it'll be like, there will be some black bits, but it'll be like a nice crispy Brussels sprout. And he's like, that's disgusting. That's charcoal. Get it out of here. And it's like, Gordon, I would love to eat those Brussels sprouts right now. What are you talking about? What a hater. That's like, those are good Brussels sprouts. And he's just like, ah, oh, garbage, terrible. Ha. Oh. I don't know. Just, just, you know, thinking stuff be happening. And uh, yeah, I mean, I like that's I'm not saying I don't like fried Brussels sprouts. I actually really do. In a lot mm-hmm. of ways, I prefer them. But like, I'm just saying just because something is better fried, I feel like sometimes people get in the headspace of, well, I got to always have it fried. But like, Mm -hmm. turns out we actually have uh, bodies and metabolisms and health and drenching everything in oil because it tastes better isn't always optimal. Right, right. But Brussels sprouts are one of those foods that specifically I feel like the optimal heads come Mm -hmm. out of the woodwork and they're like, actually, they're so much better when they're uh, fried. I I agree. I think they're better when they're fried, too. But I, I don't want to eat two pounds of Brussels sprouts and fry them every single time. Yeah, no, I think that's super reasonable, though. Also, Brussels sprouts are so cheap. Mm-hmm. Like, for what you get, like, a pound of Brussels sprouts is a ton of food. And it's, like, three, four bucks. Yeah, it's a cheap vegetable. Honestly, cabbage in general is, like, dirt cheap. I want to get, like, better at making cabbage stuff. But also, I, like, I only want to eat so much steamed cabbage a year. And there's only so many ways to prepare cabbage, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I do love a good cabbage. And there's a lot of types of cabbage, too. You know, you got the the red cabbage. Little Brussels sprouts aren't technically cabbage, but come on, you know? Mm-hmm. Napa cabbage. And then just your classic old cabbage. Napa cabbage is good. I mean, you know, Nina loves Napa cabbage. She ate your entire, like, half head of Napa cabbage it's that was true. left over from Dumpling Day. It is known. Gotta love some cabbage. Anyway, I I got nothing else to say. What about you, Jackson? <laughs> I'm fucking so tired right now, and I still have so much more to do today. Uh, what is your what is your closing wisdom you would like to leave the people um, with today? Br- Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and many other vegetables are actually all in the same family, and they're all technically classified as mustard. Mustard, the thing that you eat as a dressing that comes from the mustard seed, not technically mustard. Well, fuck you. I hate that. Why yeah, would you isn't say that, that? Like, yeah, isn't that like the worst? Yeah. I mean, mustard is mustard seed, right? It is still yep. the mustard seed? Uh, sometimes. Damn. 